Good afternoon. Welcome. It's Saturday, February 25th, about 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. If you haven't uh, already, please subscribe. And uh, today we're going to just take a look at all the earthquakes over the last seven days. We're going to talk about earthquakes over the last 24 hours. We're going to talk about earthquakes that will probably occur over the next seven days. So uh, the last video I did was on Friday, February 17th, we talked about the area here in Tonga in the Fiji region being an origination point for large deep earthquakes. And those large deep earthquakes come up to the surface and produce similar sized large shallow earthquakes and sometimes earthquakes that are one to two magnitudes larger. Um, those large earthquakes that happen over here in Fiji also transfer pressure, seismic pressure, along the plate boundaries. These red lines that you see here are the plate boundaries that separate the different significant land masses from each other. This big one in the center happens to be the Pacific Plate. And then again, the red line around the perimeter is the plate boundary, where this plate is meeting up against this plate. And these plates are meeting up against this plate. This area over here is called the, the Marianas Trench. It runs right along here. It's considered to be the deepest place on Earth uh, right here. But anyway, that's, that's the edge of the Pacific Plate, that boundary line right here that runs down through here. Incidentally, it's also this area included. These are separate plates, but this area included that runs around this Pacific Plate is also known as the Ring of Fire when it comes to uh, volcanoes. Over here, just for a reference, I'll click on this real quick. These are all the currently erupting volcanoes on VolcanoDiscovery.com. I'll leave a link to this down at the bottom in the description. That uh, on as of uh, today, the 25th of February, all these are, are volcanoes that are currently erupting up here towards Kamchatka, Russia. We'll zoom in on that and the Kuril Islands over here in uh, Japan and then um, over here on the other side on South America we have Sabancayo and um, it's just something you, you want to keep in mind. Each one of these volcanoes are related to earthquakes in that they act like a pressure relief valve as that pressure transfers along the plate boundaries at different points these volcanoes kind of can reduce or mitigate uh, the likelihood of a large erupt, uh, earthquake by releasing that seismic pressure in the form of a volcanic eruption. So in a sense, in a very mild sense, these are kind of good uh, as far as the big giant earthquakes that typically kill sometimes hundreds of thousands of people, tens of thousands of people. If the earthquake is coming across, uh, that seismic pressure is moving across the plate and it doesn't expend itself at one of these volcanoes, it will come up to the surface and produce a large earthquake which again will cause damage and uh, possibly death. So that's just a, a little picture of what's going on as far as volcanic activity so you can keep that in mind when we look at all of these earthquakes. So. Just kind of keep in, in your mind that picture of all those volcanoes. And so you take that into consideration when we talk about seismic pressure transferring along plate boundaries and across the plate. So in my last video on Friday the, the 17th, I talked about the origination point here in Fiji in the Tonga area. Um, specifically, there was a, a very large 6.5, I think it was, earthquake way down deep under the asthenosphere like 600 kilometers down that pressure came up to the surface and began a, a new round of earthquakes all along the areas um, that are indicating the pressure transfer maps which I will show you right here so if an earthquake happens here that seismic pressure will transfer sometimes under the plate out over to here but generally speaking down to the south if an earthquake happens up here in Alaska, that seismic pressure generally transfers down through here along the North American Craton and then up back up into here into Canada. Um, if it happens out here on the coast or off the coast, it will generally transfer down into Southern California 
and uh, Mexico, Central America. Um, over here on the other side, same thing. Origination point being right here, that seismic pressure transfers to the south, to the west, and then across the plate over here to South America, as you can see by these arrows right here. So that's just a little visual for you to also keep in mind. Again, these are all the earthquakes that have happened over the last seven days. Not all of them are large, not all of them are deep, but uh, you can get an idea. So I'm going to switch to the large deep earthquakes over the last seven days. So you can see these are the ones that produced all the rest of these earthquakes. So over the course of the week, each one of these that you see represented here were the origination and the, the method of inducing all of these. And as you can see, there's a pattern as far as the pressure transfer and the trajectory that it takes. Uh, right here, just while we're doing this video, we have a 2.2 earthquake in Pahala, Hawaii. Just something that popped up right there while we're doing this video. So anyway, we're going to look at the current. We're going to change this to just the last 24 hours so that we can make our forecast for the next week. And uh, we're going to do all magnitudes over the last 24 hours. So these are just the earthquakes over the last 24 hours. Again, gold dots, those represent 24 hours. Red dots within the last hour. So just in the last hour, a little swarm breaking out down here in southern central California, up here in Alaska. This has been going on over the course of the whole last week. So again, this being our origination point over here in Fiji, we had a 5.9 earthquake. Uh, the day before, uh, yesterday rather, that seismic pressure is going to come up to the surface and it's going to produce larger and shallower earthquakes all along this plate boundary up in here. Eventually, that seismic pressure comes along up in here and uh, works its way across northern India into Afghanistan, Pakistan, Greece, Turkey, and then uh, also up here in Italy. And then again, as you saw on the maps, that pressure will transfer across the plate. Now, incidentally, we've had a couple of pretty good sized earthquakes over here. I think there was a 6.9, nearly a 7.0 earthquake right over here uh, just a couple of days ago that is going to produce a larger shallower earthquake at some point. Or that seismic pressure will transfer down here and then expend itself out on the the mid-atlantic ridge over the next seven days so we're looking at some some pretty large earthquake activity to occur over here on the coast of south america um, and that's that seismic pressure again is going to produce larger shallower earthquakes so i would be on the lookout for at least a 7.0 earthquake or somewhere close to that within the next seven days over here Maybe we have a new large deep earthquake here that will now start a whole new round of earthquakes all along up in this area. Usually straight off we see earthquakes over here first and then over here. But we look for earthquakes to happen mostly in the silent areas where you don't see anything. So we're looking in here in the Solomon Islands, we're looking down here in New Zealand. We're looking over here in western Indonesia, central and western Indonesia, Papua New Guinea, Taiwan, and then up here along the Marianas Island near uh, Guam. Over the course of the week, again, that trans pressure will transfer all the way up in here into Italy. So Italy, you're looking at about four or five days for all of this seismic pressure from under the asthenosphere to come up to the surface and work its way towards you. So you got about four or five days and you can expect some some pretty big earthquakes probably around uh, 4.0 to 5.0 magnitude after maybe a week to 10 days. Uh, seismic pressure again has transferred up into here and this new large deep earthquake will also produce large earthquakes up in along here near uh, the coast of Japan. You got Honshu and Hokkaido. The Fukushima plant up here is uh, unstable and already causing a catastrophe. So hopefully uh, we won't see any seismic activity that would, you know, 
contribute to that, but uh, it's likely. So, uh, up here in Kamchatka in Russia, again, you have, you have volcanoes going off up in here in that area. And so, uh, you don't see a lot of earthquake activity because you have those pressure relief valves mitigating that. However, again, this, this seismic pressure is going to begin to move over the course of this week. Eventually, it will go up into this area. We'll see whether it goes off at a volcano or erupts in an earthquake. Along the Aleutian Island chains, all that pressure will transfer up into here. So, basically, we're going to get a repeat. Seems like there's a cycle going on where pressure transfers from up underneath the Earth and moves along its little routes. Um, if anything significant happens, again, you got a six, uh, 5.9, that means we're looking for a possible 6.9 to 7.9, a 7 or an 8 magnitude earthquake on the West Pacific side, and we're looking at a 7 to 8 over here on the uh, East Pacific side. If anything happens in between now and the next 7 days, I'll come back and I'll make short little update videos. In the meanwhile, I hope that you will come over here and subscribe to my channel. Click the little bell for notifications. You can find me on Twitter. You can find me on Facebook. Uh, you can inbox me here. And I'll leave my contact information in the description box below. Please give this video a thumbs up and share it. And I'll see you on the next go-around.